everybody. How you doing? It's been a while since I've made a video. Oh, I don't know. I just guess I wasn't in the mood, but today I'm going to update you on my pick -em up truck here, the uh, 2019 F-150. I've done a few things since the last video, quite a few things actually, and I'll show you kind of starting from the um, rear of the truck up to the front and some interior stuff. Of course, I can't even remember what I uh, showed you last time, so we'll just sort of recap everything. So what I've done actually is I've went ahead and I purchased a um, tonneau cover and this one is my it's the back industries revolver x4 some things I'll show you not very happy with but you know I can make do with it I don't want to really go through a replacement but these uh, these pieces here they're held on with uh, adhesive and two-faced tape well that two-faced tape wanted to give up the ghost so I used uh, my own tape which was 3M a VHB, pretty, pretty high bonding stuff. I guess VHB stands for very high bonding. Um, sometimes when I close the tailgate, this rubber trim right here gets caught on the tailgate and rips it back. So what I've done is I've greased up the top with a armor all like substance, uh, Adams uh, tire shine, and it allows it to slide really easily, no issues. The other issue I had was over here where this rubber gasket right here, this uh, this one here, it peeled away from this thing. So after going through a different couple different tapes, uh, the VHP did the trick and it's been like this for three months and it hasn't let go and I don't anticipate it will. Uh, the one I got was the, well the X4 is more of a matte finish. So you'll see the actual aluminum is kind of matte as well as this. I have shined it up with arm roll and uh, over time it diminishes and that's fine. The only other problem I've had with this since I, since the roof itself, uh, you can see right there, all the water just drops down onto here and just dumps in through this opening here. Well, there's a vent positioned right about here. And what happens is when the water, normally if the, you didn't have a tonneau, the water would just go in the bed and drain out. Well, the water sheets up on the tonneau, comes down through here and ends up into the vent that, that's at the back of the cab. No way to show it to you, but it, it all the water just starts dumping into my truck. So I had the back uh, panel, uh, which is the back panel over here, inside it was all wet. Floor carpeting a little wet. So once I uh, once I detect rain, it's going to happen. I just shove a towel in here, in this gap here, in this crevice, and the water is absorbed and the problem stops. So <clears throat> that's the first thing. Um, I showed you before I had a bed rug, but one thing I did do is I, f I was on the F-150 forums. I think it's f150forums.com if I'm not mistaken. But there's a guy on there named Boosted Gray Goose 2016, I think his uh, username is. And he hooked me up with these OEM LED Bliss taillights. Now someday, if I really choose to do so, I could add Bliss with a wire harness, um, some programming using Forescan and new mirror glass and harnesses, you know, of course, leading from the front to the rear. I haven't, I probably will never do it, but it's it's still a possibility because he said the Bliss modules are in these taillights. So these taillights weren't exactly cheap. Uh, I think I paid seven, 700. It's been a while. I, I did this about six months ago. So they have complete functionality. He sold me the harnesses that plug in between the actual truck harness and the taillight because you can buy another harness that goes you know, from the Lariat trucks or the ones that are equipped with Bliss. But rather than go through all that trouble, the uh, conversion harness, which is about a foot long or so, just plugs into the truck and plugs into the taillight makes it very easy. Um, another thing I did also, I think I showed you this before, is these lights, those were LED conversions as well. Um, I may actually go ahead and replace this tailgate handle with a painted version. So you have, this is all painted, the whole thing. Because right now it's just a flat black plastic. I know the camera does, doesn't take a very good picture of it because we've got the sun kind of coming at an angle right here. Um, let's see, what else did I do? Okay, so just recently I went out and I decided I want some new wheels. But I don't want to do, do, do anything too crazy. So what I did was I found a guy on the Facebook Marketplace and I picked up these OEM. These are off, a, he said 2019 F-150. And these are the... I guess the kind of a dark, yeah, medium dark, medium to dark gray uh, wheels. Uh, these are 20 inches. It comes with the Hankook Dynapro. I think it's the ATMs. 
I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ATM. Uh, the tread depth on this is around 930 seconds. So very little wear. Probably, he said it He said it had less than 1,000, but I, I'm kind of thinking it probably had a little more than that. But even my stock tires, my 18s, only have 730 seconds. So these still have more tread depth. Plus they're worn evenly all the way around. No funny wear on the tires, so that's good. $750 for that. But he told me they had sensors in it. Now the stems had sensors. The, the stems were sensor stems, but the thing is I could never get them to connect. So I went over to America's Tire. They uh, took it apart and said, you don't have any sensors. So uh, I had to buy new sensors. I didn't have to, but I, I just want to keep everything functional. So the, to the tune of $50 a sensor, $10 for, uh, $10 for install, installing them, which they gave me a break, uh, $15 off per tire since I was a previous customer. Knocked 10 bucks off the sensor from 60 to 50. So I just ended up spending about 250 bucks. But I'll make that some of that back up in the sale of my old wheels and tires. So if anybody wants those 18 inch magnetic painted pocket um, wheels with sensors and it has some good, or not good, your Michelin tires on them, then uh, let me know. Uh, I'm looking for about 650 bucks. Because if you factor in the sensor swap, you know, it's about, it's a hundred dollars in labor per set of wheels and you got two sets because you got to move it from one to the other so either way you're going to spend some money on it uh let's see here let's let's see I, let's go to the front here and i may have showed you this i don't just don't remember i actually used uh these ford performance i bought these can't remember where i got them from whoops i bought these and they're really easy to install all you literally do is just unsnap them and put them back on. They're pretty easy. Now, this is kind of something that uh, I thought was pretty cool, and I really wanted to do it. Uh, there's a guy also on the F-150 forums, and um, I forgot his name. But uh, anyways, he sold me this factory cluster with the 8-inch display. And you can see I've got my, some of my sensors installed, but you can scroll through the various uh, operations and it's a lot nicer and the gauges on top are digital as well so basically between the two uh, round gauges it's an eight inch screen and you can see there's a turbo boost gauge right there um does a, does a bunch of things just makes it feel a little more premium so you can go to uh let's see actually digital speedometer that's why i usually just keep it on so you can see that. Now the inside, other than that, is pretty much unchanged. But what I do plan on doing is I plan on getting rid of these cloth seats and doing a catskin leather uh, seating interior. And I'm just gonna hold off on that a little bit because, you know, you know, funds, you know, sometimes they're not available for that stuff. But I'm gonna definitely gonna do that. One thing I also wanna do is I wanna get rid of these uh, mirror caps. These are, again, just that uh, textured plastic, not very premium looking. But uh, on eBay, there is a guy that sells the Ford ones and he says he uses high quality paint. I hope he, I really hope he does, but I haven't ordered those yet. Again, funds. So those are about 250 bucks. That cluster, by the way, I think I spent 670 on that. And he basically programs them. Oh, it's oh, I know what his name is. It's Clusters by Living It Up. L-I-V-I-N-U-P. So anyways, uh, you can find him on the F-150 forum as well. And he hooked me up with that. It came nicely packaged and everything was perfect. The, the lenses were clean because he had to disassemble it to, to do some uh, update, updates to it and program my miles, engine hours, and engine idle hours. So I got that done by him. Uh, and as I showed you before, I do have these really cool Morimoto XB LEDs. They came with these fogs that had kind of a prison look. So I got rid of those, I sold those, and I bought the other ones, the normal ones from Morimoto, XB Fogs. Well, I did have a problem with this driver's side, although it's, it would be impossible to show you because now I've got the new ones, but the driver's side had kind of a hazy, foggy look when the lights were on, or if you shined a light into the housing, it was all inside these legs here in here and then halfway from this down it was all foggy so they uh it was um headlight revolution they sent me one replacement light and me and a friend took it apart again and i cringe because this right here this flare 
has two clips and they're like really thin plastic attached to the inside of the flare and a clip slides into it. And every time you have to pop it out, the tension from the holes that it snaps into, which is in this balance piece, is super hard. Even, at, even at taking it out a couple times, it snaps in with a with veracity. I mean, it just, it don't want to come out. So what I had to do is take this one screw out and you'll see in my truck, some of the trucks have two screws, but I have one. Although there's position somewhere behind here for another one. So once I, once I take that screw out, I pull on it and I put a piece of cloth, like it was actually a patch for like patching up your jeans, stuck it in between here because I knew it wouldn't damage it or gouge it, pulled up enough on it. And then I literally pulled out and up and then the clips just slide right off those little tabs on the inside of the uh, fender flare and I got them out. So that's a little secret. Okay, so let's see what else. What have else I done to it? Um, oh, I've got the mud, the mud guards, as I think I showed you previously. And God, I'm, I'm at a loss. What else? What else did I do to this thing? What else do I want to do to it? I'm, I'm interested in a, in a two-inch lift for the front, kind of a level kit. But I'm picky on who works in my truck. I don't really know anybody. I don't want them to damage anything mess anything up. I know it probably has to be realigned, but um, let's see here. The tail light, the tail lights are totally, 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 totally cool. I love them. Um, an exhaust might be a possibility. The only problem with the exhaust on these trucks, because this is the three and a half liter EcoBoost, is they kind of sound kind of Kind of, I don't know, kind of weak, kind of farty and high pitched, almost kind of like an import car. So, or in this case, truck. But I'm not sure if I want to do that, but uh, I did it on my Colorado, although it was a V6 as well. It wasn't turboed or anything, it was just normally aspirated. It kind of had a high pitched sound to it. It sounded probably as good as you're going to get out of an engine with a V6 motor. But uh, again, if you really wanted sound, would you have bought this uh, engine in this truck? Probably not. But the power on this truck is fantastic. It's got 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. And since I have that max tow package, you'll get about, I think it's 12,700 pounds of towing capacity, something like that. Because I have a 4x4, you lose about 500 pounds. So that's, that's with that. And, of course, I will drop the tailgate. Oh, that's right. I forgot something here. Normally, when you drop the tailgate, it just comes crashing down. Well, voila. I went ahead and I also upgraded the actual latch, or not latch, but the, the hinge here. So I've got the one from Ford, the actual OEM one. You gotta pull the tail light off. There's a ball behind the tail light. You clip on a shock absorber. And then of course on the inside of the tail, the tail light down below, I should say, there's, um, this comes through and there's like an arm that it attaches to and inside is my bed rug it, it is lit but not lit now because i didn't i can't reach the button because it's way over there but it's a it's a pretty cool carpet like material it's all made out of nylon i guess it's like spun nylon so it never mildews it never gets ugly and and the truth of the matter is, I'm probably not gonna haul anything crazy with it, like dirt and stuff like that. If I did, I would just let, definitely put a piece of wood down. You know, could avoid damage when you're shoveling your stuff out. But um, let's push this back up. Let's see if they actually, yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't catch this time, that's good. As long as you keep it kind of oiled up. Uh, let's see, so on the Corvette's side of things, I haven't driven it in so long, but uh, I gotta get it out there. I did change oil around October of last year, so it's gonna come up for an oil change. I did actually change the oil on my Civic. I bought some race ramps, which you can see in the background there in the box on top, but those are really nice too because all you have to do is just drive your car up there. You don't have to jack it up, and there's plenty of room to change the oil. So this car got its oil changed about a month ago and um, I have to drive it as well. I don't really drive it much at all. So anyways, uh, I'm thinking about getting a personalized plate for the pickup truck. And I want to get a black and yellow heritage one from, uh, you know, from the 1960s up to the early 70s. They had them in California. 
So I was thinking about getting a personalized one with the license plate truck crazy. So although this isn't the truck crazy channel, why not compliment the car crazy channel with a truck license plate? So let me know what you think of that. I did wax this truck recently. I used this uh, Carnuba wax Wolfgangs, I think it's called. I bought it originally for my 2014 C7 Stingray convertible. It was white, it was expensive. This wax is like 195 bucks for a tub of it. Crazy price, but it does give you a free refill once you uh, run out. You send the certificate back in the, in the container and they will send you a brand new one. So call it, you know, call it 9750 for per tub. So I'm almost out, so I need to send it back. But yeah, the one wheel that I got from the seller of these wheels had a couple of nicks in it and I wasn't too happy with it. So I went to a place called Santa Ana Tire and Wheel, or Wheel and Tire, and I found them on eBay. So I contacted them and said, hey, I'm looking for a, a pristine wheel. I only need one. No scratches, nicks, gouges. So he goes, I got it. So I cruised on down there and thoroughly checked it out. And that's what this wheel is because the other wheel is over here and I touched it up. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna sell this wheel or use it as a spare. But I guess I may just end up selling it and then just purchasing another one from Santa Ana wheel and tire, tire and wheel, and uh, eventually just getting another hand cooked tire and, and uh, hooking it up underneath. Now the actual tire that, uh, was, that came off this is a 275, just like this one is. The aspect ratio was different. I think this one here, I think the other ones were 65. These are 55. So the other ones were 65 and they were 18. So when you, when you take the tires and you put them side by side, and this is how Ford designed it, they are exactly the same height, the same width, except basically the wheel expands into the tire. So you have a smaller aspect ratio. In other words, there's less rubber between the wheel and the tire. Uh, I like it better without the white raised weight lettering. That's kind of, kind of seventies, you know, kind of eighties. I'd prefer it without it. These tires were in really good shape. So I've got sensors in it now and I'm gonna probably end up doing a couple of those painted items on the mirror caps and on the cap cover in the back for the uh, tailgate release and the leather seats. And I think I'm done with it. And um, I guess when the warranty runs out, if I have it that long, maybe I'll do a tune on it. But I kind of don't want to mess with the the mechanics of it because I don't want to have any reliability issues. So. That's why I really haven't done much to any of these cars. They're all stock. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up uh, or dislike if you don't like the video and let me know what you don't like about it. It might be a little long, but uh, you know, sometimes I ramble and run off the mouth a little bit here. So love the truck. I think it's fantastic. I uh, can't wait to do the future mods. And with that said, this is the car crazy guy here from uh, beautiful Santa Clarita. I hope all is well with you. and. You're staying safe, and uh, I will catch you on the next one. Take her easy.